Hi, I'm Rick Jansen. Welcome to my fly tying channel. You know, coronaments are a very important food source for the trout in the lakes of British Columbia. By some estimates, coronaments make up 80 to 90 percent of a trout's diet during the open water season. So it pays to have a selection of coronaments in your fly box. At times, the trout can be frustratingly difficult about size, color, and location, but I've found that's a rarity. Most of the time, near enough is all that it takes. Keeping it simple is the order of the day. Over 40 years ago, I came up with a very simple coronament that I still use today. It's been effective for four decades and it hasn't slowed down. So let's take a look at my super simple coronament. my fly bench. Let's take a look at the very short list of materials that you're going to need to tie a super simple coronamid. If you like this video, please tap that subscribe button on the bottom right of your screen. Thank you. So into my vise I have a Togans number 14 2x long curved nymph hook. Most coronamids are small, so 14 is good, although I do tie this in 12s and 10s as well. I am taking my ADOT black unithread and going to build up a bit of a taper behind that 332nd white bead. Now that white bead is the only concession I've made to modernity. Back in the day when this pattern, I was first tying this pattern, the head would have been peacock curl. We didn't have beads designed for flies at that time, and peacock curl would have been the order of the day. It represented the, uh, the gills, the uh, wing buds, and the head all in one. And, you know, to be perfectly frank, it worked just fine. So uh, I'm building up a bit of a taper here behind the white bead. White bead does a good job of attracting the trout to the fly in the uh, waters that we fish. Most of our BC interior waters have somewhat of an LJ bloom during the open water season. And uh, you need something to draw the attention of the fish in. It also does a decent job in those murky waters of representing the gills, the white filaments at the head of a coronamid pupa. And so the white bead is the choice of the day. Um, now we've built up a bit of a taper there. And our next order is to put in some fine, extra small copper wire in the natural color and uh, that's going to form the ribbing on our fly. I'm just going to cut off a section of that there and uh, we see if we can get that sorted. And we go with extra small as this fly is quite a, a tiny fly and uh, we need a very small rib to be proportional with the fly. Now we'll give that, secure that in there behind the, the bead and uh, make sure we lock it in place with some good wraps. And just about here, we're going to be using some black rayon floss. It's four strand floss, <clears throat> um, Danville's. I've had these for many years. I'm showing you the, the burgundy because the label came off my black one. My Danville's four strand rayon floss. That's all we used back then. Now we use floss because it has a bit more of a sheen than this, the thread alone. And we can replace that sheen with uh, resin on the flies that we do today. But in the spirit of simplicity, I've eliminated all unnecessary accoutrements like resin and glues and everything else in this fly to keep it very simple. Now we're gonna tie that floss in there and it helps to wet your fingertips, lick them, because floss is very um, frizzy. It will uh, fray a lot. It has that tendency. And so by wetting your fingertips, you can minimize the amount of fraying that's going on as you're tying your fly in. Now I'm wrapping the thread back to the bend of the hook, uh, securing the floss and the wire 
to the shank of the hook back to the bend. And I see this little tag end of the floss here up at the front. I'm not worried about it as the floss and the wire will cover those up in the threads. Besides, it's too short to cut with the scissor, scissors I have on hand. Now I'll let the, th uh, the bobbin dangle and I'll spin it counterclockwise to flatten the thread as I bring my thread forward because I want flatter wraps. I don't want any obvious uh, look of corduroy, any hills or valleys in my taper here. And basically building up this the, a taper that resembles a carrot. This is a carrot shaped fly. Uh, all coronamids in the pupil form are that carrot shape and it pays to uh, present a silhouette the same as the natural in that carrot shape. And uh, there we go, we've got a very slender carrot. Now I'm going to leave the uh, wire behind and just wrap the floss forward. Now if we can, if I can get the wire separated, there we go. And the reason we tie in everything at the uh, head end, the wire and the floss, is because that's where we want some buildup in the taper. We don't want any ungainly lumps near the tail. We want this to be a very fine tapered off tail. If we tie in things there, we risk building up a bulk that looks unnatural. So now the floss comes forward in nice even wraps and you see it has a bit more of a sheen than the thread does. Very simple way to present that natural looking sheen. Uh, of course, you can tie these in acetate floss and dip them in acetate. They give a very nice sheen that way. But again, I'm keeping it simple and as close to the original that I tied 40 years ago as possible. Now, I'll tie off that floss just behind the bead there with a couple of wraps. Cut that off as short as I can. But again, not worried too much about the tag end. The, uh, the thread will cover that up. And now I bring forward my wire in nice even spirals, about five to seven spirals. There's two, three, four. Oh, try to keep them even. Five and six. And I bring that down. And I'll finish off that wire with a few wraps behind and a couple in front to lock it in place. And again, spirit of simplicity, I just support the fly there, grab the wire and helicopter that wire until it breaks off right under the thread. Now, we'll just give that two wraps. We'll take our whip finish tool, attach that and give it a whip finish. And you've got one of the simplest coronamids you're ever gonna tie. As you can see, this didn't take very long. I can tie over a dozen, close to two dozen in an hour and uh, be, have my fly box fully stocked. It pays to have these in smaller and larger sizes, also in different colored flosses. You can go burgundy, green, brown, and you could vary the, um, vary the color of your small copper wire. It can be more reddish or even go with black when you're using a lighter color, like a light green or, or something like that. But I'd stick with the white bead as a representative of the gills. Keep it simple. You can load up your fly box in this and have great times out there catching fish. Tight lines, good luck, and thank you for watching.